comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Dixon and Dixon and all his reindeers pulling on the reins. Bells are ringing, children sing. Radio right here on 90.9 FM. This is the station where issues are definitely our concern. And you're joining Shasha right here on Millennial World. And we are going to be looking at a very interesting conversation today, okay? 2020 is almost done. And we will not stop reminding you that it's almost done because we want you to have your affairs in order. And because of that, today we are going to be going into your phones. What applications are you using? What applications do you need to let go of in 2020? What applications will help you better in 2021? And to have that brilliant conversation, we are going to be talking to a Gen Z today, okay? We have gone the whole another direction. We're not talking to you baby boomers. We're not looking at only millennials. But we're looking at a Gen Z who, uh, in my opinion, has the best knowledge on what some of the best apps out there are going to be. And this is none other than Kachila Tembo. Oh, rather, K. Welcome to the program, K. Thank you for having me. How are you doing, by the way? I'm pretty well, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Um, now, maybe just to help us um, get to know you a bit better, considering I think this is your first time on. Um, K, you just uh, completed school recently. Uh, we're talking off air and you're doing your A-levels. Uh, how has just 2020 been from your perspective, someone who's uh, not yet fully into society, but just finding your, your way out of the whole formal education process? 2020 has definitely been a deep dive mentally. I would say it was very hectic for me because I had just started the next part of my education and then all of this stuff happened so it definitely took a toll on me mentally but now I think it's all right <laughs> I don't know why you whispered eventually but I, I do get you like the year has been um, a really really crazy one but because of the year we've had uh, more than ever I think we've been forced into our phones a lot more what application are you using what application don't you have uh, for the most part, I think 2020 was the year where people discovered that Zoom was uh, a video application and not a fast delivery of any sort. Yeah. Um, when you say really good, I know some people might not have had the chance to use Zoom. Uh, what were you using Zoom for, uh, mostly? Mostly classes. Ah, so you're one of those who had to join the online class community. Yes. <laughs> uh, considering um, moving from going to class every day to doing it online which one do you like better i actually like in-person classes more because zoom it made me feel so lazy to do my work i won't even lie there's just something about being at home instead of in a learning environment that just does, isn't the same currently what would you say is your favorite application to use my favorite application right now, I mean, I have to say YouTube because I'm on it. <laughs> that you actually are. Uh, I'm glad you started with YouTube. I was hoping to tie in somewhere. But you are a YouTuber, one of uh, Zambia's most consistent uh, YouTubers. Uh, first, how did you even get into using YouTube? I know most people find it really complicated. So, my sister and I were into many American YouTubers at the time, and we had recently moved to Zambia. So we were just keeping in touch with what was happening in the Western world, and we're like, wait, this is something we can do. No one's really doing this here, so why can't we start? How do you set up the process? Um, but more than that, how do you stay consistent with your content? Because I think I see a notification pop up from you every week. I try to upload as often as possible, but I slack sometimes, but it's just a lot of work. So staying consistent, you just have to always try to film what you're doing. A lot of my content is vlogs because it's what I'm doing during the day. It's simple content that I can easily put out. Can anybody uh, start this? And I know that some people might be thinking about it, but uh, we come back to even just content. When you say vlogs of your day, um, how do you mean and how would somebody maybe start also a process of creating their own YouTube videos considering now everybody's a personal brand? Yes. 
you can just use your phone. You don't need expensive equipment. You can easily start making videos. If you're hanging out with your friends that day, record it and don't tell us that you're hanging out with your friends. Show us. That's one thing. It's a showing thing. It's a show and tell. A lot of people like do not show what they're doing, but that's the point of YouTube is to show your viewers and bring them into your life so they feel that they're literally your friend and they're part of what you're doing. I love that. It's a show. That's actually very... I've never had anyone say that before. That, that's really interesting. So, um, you're on YouTube constantly. How many uh, followers do you have on your page? I have close to 8,000. I have 7,900 and something. You've been on YouTube for how long? I've been on YouTube for like five years, but I consistently started uploading in 2019. So the spike has been from 2019. Firstly, uh, congratulations. Uh, five years is no joke, but even more than that, your, your amount of followers is really impressive. It shows people are gravitating to what you're talking about. And uh, considering the kind of world we're getting into where everyone's trying to share information, everyone wants to use social media to uh, send a message of some sort or interact with people of a similar vein. I guess YouTube definitely is going to be a very important application for next year. Definitely. What else would you suggest? Uh, I saw um, one that I like and I, I noticed you also like it is uh, Pinterest. Yes. Uh, but Pinterest can be a bit weird for some people because uh, it's just really pictures. You get to pin up that uh, could be of ideal importance could help you figure out how to do something, some hacks, uh, but how, what exactly is it you're looking for when you go on Pinterest and how can people uh, utilize Pinterest well? Pinterest is a pic like a picture form of YouTube, I'd like to say. It's easy for people to find lifestyle hacks, recipes you're looking for, pictures, for instance, I blog, so on my Instagram I look for fillers, for my feed, and there's just so much you can find. When you're searching, you said you blog also? Well, on Instagram, not really a blog. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that actually counts. Uh, okay. Um, what else are you currently using? What else do you think people definitely need to get themselves involved in for 2021? Delivery apps. That is something I have definitely been on this year. Uh, the only delivery app I know, which I don't know if it really counts, but it's just like Ulendo because like, they will deliver me somewhere. <laughs> so I've been using Afri delivery mostly. So to deliver my food, it just saves on time. And some restaurants are very far. And for me, I can't drive. I'm underage. So sometimes you just want something specific and you can't get it. So order it. That's actually something. Um, we were talking about earlier on because of COVID-19 everybody's into look I don't want to come to your store if you can deliver it COVID has put us Zambians in a situation where for once we're actually comfortable a lot more comfortable I guess than before with uh, either calling in to make an order not going to get it uh, and just having it delivered at some point I remember stores were saying how uncomfortable they find it you know some people don't pay up some people make prank call orders uh, but in a normal business sense do you think we are going to see almost every sort of business in the country uh, trying to get in on a delivery service or do you think things might blow over once COVID becomes like the common flu I think we're going to gravitate towards it more we already have started so I don't think it will really change in that aspect. You think it's because we we might become lazy and uh, accustomed to just having things delivered or it's just the convenience of I don't want to walk into any place and you know, just bring it over if you can. And the realization that you don't have to go everywhere because we would just go everywhere for no reason before COVID but now we've started to really think about our movements. You also, uh, you sent me something and you're talking about Huji. What is a Huji? <laughs> Huji, it's Huji Cam in full. It's an application where you can take pictures like the 90s. Okay, well, uh, 
One of the things we're talking about when we were off air for a bit there was how important uh, mental health is. Yes. Uh, you told me there is an app called Cove, right? Yes, C O V E, Cove. Cove. Uh, when I think of that, the only thing I can think about is just like um, covenants and that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, what is Cove all about? Cove is an app that is essentially a mood journal where you can express your feelings. So a mood journal is basically journaling but where you're taking account of your feelings. Okay, uh, and is this one of those where you need to fill it in every day, every week? As often as you feel necessary. When you're feeling a certain type of way, you input your emotions and you can make music according to the way you're feeling. I love this application because one of the things I think we talk about now more than ever is how important mental health is. Uh, for most of us, well, I'm always telling people write down how you feel, uh, writing down, whether it's in form of a letter to someone, but writing down your feelings is really, really important. But then having an application that can help you track it, especially uh, when you time yourself, you give yourself moments, whether it's every day you want to be able to write it down, I think it's really going to be a game changer for most people especially in a country like Zambia where the conversation on mental health, even though we do talk about it, a few of us, I feel it's still not loud enough and I guess as an individual you have to take the responsibility. No, it's definitely overlooked. It's something we need to work on in the future. When you look at Anchor, um, especially now with everybody trying to get digital and trying to do things on their phone, how important is podcasting going to be for 2020 and I guess the rest of whatever the, the 20s looks like podcasting is an industry that is growing as well it's very important i think to enhance our knowledge on different topics that are going on and you find podcasts on everything a few of my friends have podcasts that i listen to all the time and it's nice to hear people's opinions on what's going on with them and the world around me uh how, how do you deal with all of that constant stream of information? I'm sure people comment, they text you uh, about your content. How do you deal with that? How do you put that into perspective so that even if people are sending you bad reviews, you don't completely break down? So, you have to remember that you're not doing it for them entirely. You're doing it for you. That's one thing. When you're focusing on the negative, like if you get a dislike, you're Oh, no what did I do wrong but then you have to look at the positives oh 200 people like this video okay four people disliked it does that mean I'm doing something wrong no that means that oh, okay not everyone's gonna like me and it is what it is I'm home now and I was just conversing with Nyemba she was showing me videos of her and Jeff being silly listening to me <laughs> so I have to find an outfit because we're going for this my Zambia my responsibility thing um, at Mulungushi Conference Center and apparently it's a drip or drown type of thing. Honestly, I think I'm finna drown. I'm not sure about the drip. <laughs> um, so I have to try to figure out an outfit and we have like slightly over an hour to get ready. Maybe like an hour, 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so we are now at Mulungushi Conference Center because we're here for the My Zambia My Responsibility thing. I eventually found an outfit at home. I'm wearing the dress that I wore for Sunrise Wedding. If you watched that vlog, you've seen it before. But yeah, now let me show you guys the little guys in the back. Oh my gosh, look at them. They're so cute. So good. We are here excited. We are official or whatever. And yeah, we're chilling. We have focalistic for free. <laughs> Literally. Anyways, yeah, I look kinda cute or the camera's doing what it must. But yeah. Aren't we excited? Isn't this something beautiful?
a round of applause once again. We can do better than that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the poem I'm about to read you is a celebration of humanity achievements at the end of the last millennium and a rallying cry for the next, for my generation. It is strongly political, touches on issues of racism, tolerance, and environmental destruction, amongst others. And here in Zambia, we know them as xenophobia, tribalism, and deforestation. So the reason why I chose this poem is because I felt it's time to make a change, time to honor those who came before us, and we live up to the legacies. So here goes. Mental Fight by Ben O'Cree. You can't remake the world without remaking yourself. Each new era begins with it. It is an inward event with unsuspected possibilities for inner liberation. We could use it to turn on our inner lights. We could use it to use even the dark and negative things positively. We could use the new era to clean our eyes, to see the world differently, to see ourselves more clearly. Only free people can make a free world. Infect the world with your light. Help fulfill the golden prophecies. Press forward with the human genius. Our future is greater than our past. We are better than that. We are greater than our despair. The negative aspects of humanity are not the most real and authentic. The most real and authentic thing about us is our capacity to create, to overcome, to endure, to transform, to love, and to be greater than our suffering. Thank you. on how to improve our agricultural sector are with you, the Zambian farmer. What if solutions to creating jobs for the youth are actually with you, the youth, who are, for instance, washing cars on the streets of Zambia? What if the solutions to a better education sector are with you, the Zambian teachers and lecturers in our various institutions of learning? What if you, the ordinary people of Zambia are sitting with some of the best ideas and solutions to Zambia's challenges. Who told you that only politicians should offer solutions to the challenges of this nation? A platform where we can protect our country together. 
a platform where we can defend our country together, such that if an outsider comes against my brother, regardless of which grouping they're coming from, I will be able to defend them. A platform that makes us one Zambia, one nation. I am happy to be a part of this national movement called My Zambia My Responsibility, first as a Zambian citizen and secondly as a founder. Why should one person be more responsible for this country than another person? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 20 talks about the unity and diversity in the body. So good. Yeah, yeah. It's Kiki, so join a big boy. So my baby on fire. Mm. Ninja fire, oh. So my baby on fire. Mm. Ninja fire, oh, so my baby on fire. Ninja fire, oh, I find your way to your body. I find my way. Miles away, you're the reason I run my race. I am because you are. My fellow Zambians, let us arise and make Zambia the best place to live. I am Dr. Denver Educate Founder, and this is my Zambia, my responsibility. This is supposed to be now an annual event, which we did as former First Ladies of the Republic of Zambia a few years ago with my colleagues. I, as I stand here, the fashion show is supposed to be part of my Zambia, my responsibility to showcase the talents that we have. Mama Bet Kaunda is being remembered today deliberately and the fashion show is in her memory. She opened the doors of this country as the first, first lady of the Republic of Zambia. She left footsteps. So tonight we are we have picked one aspect of her journey, the duku, which we always wear as Zambians, and let us legitimize it, own it, and use it. So good. So the event is done now. We have fun, I can say. I'm waiting for Miss NT. But yeah, we had fun. It was a cute event. And now we're just taking pictures and chilling and all that fun stuff. You enjoyed it, didn't you? Yeah, it was cool. I danced to gospel music, which is like Period. the best, you know, turn-ups. Gospel turn-ups? Could you even? Mm -hmm. 